Hi, is your wargaming terrain taking up too much space? Have you run out of places to put all the great scale models you're making? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can design and laser cut a collapsible building that you can store flat. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And today's project is a pretty special one for me because it's the culmination of several videos that I've made over the last few months all uh, allowed me to make this. And what this is, is a collapsible tavern that I've designed for Dungeons and Dragons, but it could be, uh, it could work just as well for wargaming or uh, any other kind of scale model. And this is uh, something that starts out flat, and I'll be showing you that. But you can assemble it within minutes, a couple of minutes, to put it together. It's very sturdy once it's together. And uh, you can play with it and then pack it up and put it away. So what are the different steps I took on the way to be able to do this? The first step was getting the idea for it just the idea, a collapsible tavern that you could store flat. And that idea came from a brainstorming session with Claude, which is Anthropic's AI chatbot. And I did a video about that brainstorming session, and I'll, I'll put a link to that here. In that session, um, Claude came up with a variety of ideas for wargaming terrain. And uh, also, he came up with the idea of collapsible terrain. And I said, well, that's really interesting. Tell me about that. And that's how I learned about living hinges. And living hinges is the second thing I had to learn about. And I have a video about that. And uh, I learned how to do what living hinges are, which is a way to cut wood so that it's flexible. And then how to design those and how to test different parameters to, to uh, get successful living hinges. And so that is what is used in this model to make it collapsible. There are living hinges in the, the roof here that allow it to lay flat, but most importantly, the four corners of the building are living hinges. And um, that means that the building walls come apart in basically two pieces and the door is what makes up the building. And because of that construction, once you put it together, it's very stable and you can play with it. And that would not be true if I used traditional methods like tab and slot construction. You can't just stick those together and have them stay together. You have to glue them together. So really, this is only made possible by living hinges. So that's the second big thing I had to learn. The third thing is something I've been working on for a while, which is how do you design a building like this? And I designed this building in Lego Fortnite. And I have a video about that. And basically what I've done is I've created a library in Adobe Illustrator that matches all the main building components in Lego Fortnite. So anything I build there, I can replicate very quickly in Adobe Illustrator, create the drawing that I used to cut it on my laser cutter. So I went in and I designed this tavern there. And the first version of this tavern had what is called a gable roof. This is a hip roof, and it has the four corners, but a gable roof are the more traditional style ones that come up to a point. And if I had made this with a gable roof, these walls on the end would have been pointed on the top, these two walls. Now the roof would have had one hinge at the top, and it would have just folded down over the front and back and would have just basically laid there. It was the much easier roof for me to construct. But when I was in LEGO Fortnite designing this, I realized that if I wanted this for gameplay, and this is about playing inside. So the, um, I'll set the roof off for a second here. Inside of here is a one inch grid, which is the size grid we use for Dungeons and Dragons. Here's my little Grey Light May character inside the tavern. And this is a 15 by 9 uh, grid in the floor. When I went into LEGO Fortnite and built this, 
it is the same scale as wargaming. So everything you see there is replicated uh, here. And I was able to put all the furniture in and see what would fit in this space. In fact, the first one I made was too small. And um, so I made it larger. And in this tavern, as it's designed, I can fit in a bar with four bar stools. Actually, you don't have stools in Dungeons and Dragons. You just stand next to the bar. And that's true of the tables as well. But this can have two large tables, a third table, a small storage room over in the corner. There's a little bar over here with self-serve drinks and, um, and plenty of room to move around. And I know that this is gonna work because I did it in Lego Fortnite. But the main thing was reaching, uh, thinking about what it would be like to play with this with a gable roof. And these points would be sticking up here and that would make it harder to reach inside. It would make it harder for everyone to see inside. If you're sitting uh, at a table playing, this is a very open design. So I decided based on that, I needed a hip roof and I designed a second version of the building just changing the roof lines and went with the hip roof. So that's a great environment for testing out gameplay in a situation like this. Once I get a design I like, I can just go into Illustrator, pull out the pieces that I already know I need from my library and assemble it. And that's what I did to do the next step. And that's a very important step, which is designing this finally um, for a collapsible building. So for one thing, I had to create new walls for this design because I did not have these Tudor style walls in my library, but I thought they were perfect for this Dungeons and Dragons tavern. So I created those and added them to the library and that way they're available uh, going forward anytime I need them. I built this the way exactly I would build, uh, designed it the way I would if I were doing normal construction. But then I had to put living hinges into these places. So I actually have living hinges on the door as well. So there's two doors here and uh, they both have living hinges on them. But these, uh, I had to put these living hinges in here and the building, as I said, is basically this, this is one section, this is the other section. And there's these very simple uh, connectors that I've made that you just slide the walls in from either side. They're all held in place once they're slid in because there's tension created by these living springs and it keeps it, um, it keeps it very sturdy. And so I have a solid piece here for the door, two connectors, two large wall sections, one connector here in the middle of the back. So that's how this is designed. The hip roof, uh, much trickier, as I said, than a gable roof would have been. Um, I have, you saw that it, it flattened out here. <laughs> These are the hinges. And uh, I've put magnets in the corners. And that's my current solution. I, I don't know if it's my final solution, but it's working out pretty well so far. So that's my collapsible tavern I'm going to show you in this video. Um, not the first steps because I've already made videos about them. I'm just going to talk about going in and, and what this looks like in LEGO Fortnite, what the interior looks like. I am going to make small furniture and everything for this. I'm going to talk about what it was like in like a fortnight, but then I'm going to show you in Illustrator what it took to put the living hinges in. And the other big decision you have to make is where do you make the breaks in the walls for these connectors? The biggest pieces of uh, eighth inch basswood I could find were 12 by 24. So that was my one constraint is that the longest pieces had to fit in a 24 inch length and, and these do. So I'm going to show you all of that in this episode. This is what the tavern looks like in LEGO Fortnite. This is the exterior. You can see this was the original one I made with the gable roof. Now let's go inside and just see how much space is inside of this 15 by 9 inch scale model. To the right there's going to be an alcove that's created by putting a wall up around the storage room in the back corner. So there's a table here that four characters can sit at, another table for four in the middle, 
the bar has four slots and of course there's room behind the bar for the barkeep and here is the storage room and then uh, there's another table here like the one in the alcove that has seating for four and this little table in the back corner through the side door I've put this small patio now let's take a look at the design inside of Adobe Illustrator first I add the Tudor walls to the library they're just like the standard walls but they have these engraving lines that show me how to paint the Tudor design I created all the standard wall sizes those are going to have their own separate tab in the library but for the window and the door I just add the Tudor versions to the standard window walls and door wall sections once they're in the library you can just open the library up and look at those tabs there's the Tudor wall tab and those are all the wall sections and here under door walls you'll see that I've added the living hinge Tudor door and under window walls I've added the large Tudor window this then is the actual building design document I had to make very large hinges for the roof and these are the standard kerf design living hinges that you'll see in the other video that's the simplest and most efficient living hinge design for the walls the first thing I did is design them exactly as I would if they had pillars in the corners but I took the tabs off of the sides of these knowing I would have a living hinge there and then I had to decide where was I going to make those breaks the joiner I've designed is one inch wide and it takes up a quarter inch of each of the boards that slide into it. I've decided to put one on either side of the front door and one in the middle of the back and that green rectangle shows me the pattern I'm going to need to replicate on the front of the joiner to make it less obvious. Then I did a page with my actual collapsible walls and this is the length the 24 inch length I said that I had to work with and up at the top I've got the pieces that make up the joiner and you can see that I have replicated the patterns that were inside the rectangles. There are three layers to the joiner with a half inch board in the middle. Then I had to lay out the other walls in the right order and put in the living hinges in the places where the pillars would have been. And this was just a process that required me to be very mindful and careful as I did it. Each has half of the back wall, one of the sides of the building, and one window from one side of the front. Each wall section has a quarter inch that I know is going to be going inside of that joiner. The last piece is the front door itself. Now I have a neoprene mat with a one inch grid on it and if I were using that I could skip all of this next part entirely. You would just remove the tabs from the bottom of the building. But I decided to include a standalone floor and I did the grid on a separate board and then I cut the walls and put them together to see how they fit around that grid. I used the height and the width of the assembled building to know where the slots needed to go. Now I just needed to know which slots need to be where. I went back to my four original separate walls and laid them out the way I would the same process I use for my traditional buildings. And once I have them in place, I just go to where every tab is on each of those walls and right where that tab touches the rectangle where the slot should be I will put in a 1 8 inch by 1 half inch slot that is designed to hold each one of those tabs. This process worked perfectly. So now it's time to cut and paint. I did use 1 8 inch basswood for all of the pieces I had to cut it on my own tech because it was too large for my We Create vision. The longest cutting piece were those long wall extensions and they took about 13 minutes a piece. The roof also took about 13 minutes because of the long hinges. I needed to figure out how to get the corners of the roof to come together and I looked at the Lego Fortnite roof and how they did it and I tried to replicate that with magnets but even with three magnets on each of these sides they kept sliding off of each other 
So I moved to a single stronger magnet that was going to meet face to face with its mate. I had to sand the edge of these a little so that they could lean back in the right position. They work, but they're a little too visible, so I'm still working on this. The other bit of assembly are the joiners. You have to glue these three layers together for each piece. That's two one inch wide pieces sandwiching a half inch wide piece in the middle. I used a dark brown stain for all of the hinges and for the Tudor trim. I've only used uh, stain on hinges because they don't, it doesn't interfere at all with the movement of the piece. I used an off-white acrylic paint to do the outside panels and the inside walls. I plan on cutting two different colors of parquet to do the flooring in a checkerboard pattern. I'm going to do dark brown stain on the inside of the hinges. I'm also going to do some short interior walls and furniture that are all movable. So that's the collapsible tavern. I plan on doing a carrying case for it in a future video and a lot of other fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.